afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Neil Emery. I'm a, what they call an Apple Distinguished Educator, which is a very posh title that makes most of my friends laugh, to be honest. Um, personally, I'm very passionate about education, and that's most where I work. <laughs> I work within the education space. I try not to touch my behind again, because that seems to happen. Um, so I work in the education space. And uh, just to let you know, I used to run a recording studio for eight years. And we used to use Max in that recording studio. And it was a very stable platform. Um, I, had a, I lovingly had a very beautiful uh, VW van as well that I called Mrs. Millhouse. And we packed it with Max. And we went out and did workshops with disaffected youth all across the West Midlands. And uh, we used Max. And again, we found it uh, to be a very stable platform and one that those disaffected youth, as we like to put them into that corner, bless them, uh, which we shouldn't do, but that's another conversation, um, picked up that, uh, that, that technology very quickly and went out and created great content and almost aspired to greater things. Uh, and then I started to work heavily with Apple in the education space, which is where I do work heavily now still. And I'd go into schools and say, oh, brilliant, you've got Macs, what are you doing with them? And they'd be like, oh, we hate them. And we're like, sorry? Yeah, we hate them. They don't do anything. They don't, they don't do what we want. Yeah, don't like them. And uh, I think after a while, what, what tends you to find out is that someone goes out and makes a decision that no one else is really comfortable with. And I've had lots of conversations about that this morning. And then teachers walk into a room full of Macs on the first day of term and go, I don't know, I've never used a Mac before. Where's Word? Where's Excel? Where's all the things that I'm very much used to? Uh, IT go, well, we were never offered training and we don't really like Macs. So to be honest, stuff here, we're not going to support them. And then, to be honest, the network, that's not going to support it either, because you never asked us if all these mobile devices will sit on our really small wireless network. So Apple get me involved as early as possible to just talk and uh, you know, make sure that everybody's happy with the decisions that are being made. Because if not, they tend to fall on their behinds a little bit in regards to all this lovely new technology going in. And we can all be excited about technology. We can all be excited about iPads. You can go to the store and you can pick one up and hug it and kiss it and think, oh, I love that. I'm going to have some of that. But unless we know the real possibilities and strengths out of the box, then for me, there's not really much point in buying it in the first place. And I'll be very honest about that. I've been very honest with people this morning who come up and say, can you run Windows on it? Can you do it? I'm like, if you're going to do old processes and on a wonderful bit of new kit like this, don't buy it, to be honest. Yeah? Have a netbook. Have something that will do that for you anyway. Why, why have a, a piece of technology like this to do old processes on? So that's where I will come from. I will be very honest about that. So why would a teacher, why would education, start with education, why would education look at using an iPad within their day? How would that start? It would probably start with doing the register, to be honest. And if I double tap the home <coughs> button, I'm not doing anything when that happens, by the way. When I double tap the home button, I can see all my apps that are open in memory. So yeah, it's a bit like my shortcuts. So if you double tap the home button, that will always give you your apps that are open in memory. So I might use something like Emerge Sims, which is a register taken app. So if I just press back, it's a very simple uh, opening interface that you'll see. And if I, if I want to see all of my student information, I can simply go and see my students by name. This is live at the moment, so it might be a bit of delay. And then you can go in and see all your student information, timetables, contact info, behavior issues that they might have. So it very much is your managed information system in the palm of your hand. And uh, Group Call came up with this initially because they were being asked by a lot of PE teachers that they wanted to do their register out on the playing field, but they couldn't. So they developed this for the iPod Touch initially. So when you're off the wireless network, it saves it within the device. And when you go back onto the network, then it saves it back to your SIM system at the back end. So for registers example, I can go in to see Mrs. Andrews' registers. And then if I want to pick one of our lessons, we can go in and start to do our register. And the interesting stat here, and we can see all the authorized absences or unapproved absences, paper, paper registers used to take around eight minutes to complete. With an app such as Emerge Sims, you can do that in 45 seconds. So you start adding that up over a year, there's about 60 hours worth of teaching that you're saving on. So that's a fairly good saving, I would have thought. So Emerge Sims is one of those apps that is becoming interesting within the education space. And Emerge will actually allow you to test that for a month. They'll give you a couple of iPads. They'll put the uh, application on to your management system. And you can try that out for a month to see how it works. I love it, actually, because if you think about I'm, all right, I'm on a VGA here. Downstairs, we are wireless using iOS and wireless mirroring. But you think about the interaction of a teacher being able to walk out within their class and start interacting rather than be behind a desk 
with lots of cable ties like they usually are, barking orders from the front. And I think that starts to change the dynamics of how we're starting to use technology within education. So Emerge Sims. What would a teacher look to do after that? Probably deliver a classroom project. That's probably what they would do. Now, normally, again, I think they would probably bark their orders from behind a desk, you know, from their computer. But we have a couple of nice cameras within our iPad. So we have a, a back camera and a front camera. And I'm, you can see me there. Look, I look kind of weird because I'm just ahead. But if I wanted, I'll do this carefully because I haven't got much room here. So if I turn that camera around, I can obviously see you lovely people as well. There you are. Always gets a smile. Seeing our own faces gets a smile, doesn't it? You might want to use video. Why would you want to use video? Well, let's not forget we're in a world that totally uses video nowadays. YouTube, uh, uh, 24 hours worth of video uploaded every single minute on YouTube. It's a bad example of mine at the moment, but when I was, uh, I live in Birmingham, when it, when it was kicking off with the riots and 200 young people were running around smashing things up, what they were doing all the time, video in pictures all the time. It's what we do. So why not use video? So I could simply press and record. Good morning, students. This is Mr. Emery, your physics teacher. Today, we are going to concentrate on motion, velocity, time, and graphing. And we're going to use Angry Birds. Yes, I can see the surprise in your face. And an app called uh, Video Physics. So if you could make sure they're on your iPad, and good luck. And that will simply save into my camera roll which if I double tap on my home button again, I can go and find my camera roll, which is my photos, and I can flick into my photos, and there's the piece of video that we've just taken. Yeah? Which we can't hear very well. Today we are going to concentrate there we on go. motion. So I think that when teachers might look at doing video, maybe putting that onto a VLE or a wiki and allowing their students to go to an address to actually see what their project's going to be about, again, it starts to change the dynamics a little bit. I might want to make that a little bit more, more exciting. Although I'm sure you're captivated by my piece of video there. We might want to go into something like iMovie and make this a little bit more exciting. So iMovie is, I've got a full version on our Macs downstairs on the stand, but we've also got a nice cut down version here. So if I click onto my media browser button, that will show me that video that we've just taken. So the media browser is really, really interesting in Mac space that allows me to see all my pictures there we go, all my photos, which I, you can see there, all my music and all my video. So I can simply tap that video, press it, and it will load down onto my time line. And I can play that back. I want to make this a little bit more interesting. So I press my cog, which is called our action menu. We get lots of action menus in the Mac space. I can go and add a nice CNN theme. I can turn on fade in, fade out from black. And you're saying, well, Neil, we don't see anything different there. Well, I tap on the piece of content to outline it. I double tap again, and we can put a nice title style on here. And there I am. It knows where we are, because we're on the wireless as well. And then I can double tap in here, change the text, and I can put physics, introduction. And again, we're just tr starting to change the dynamics a little bit of what we do within the classroom pop that down and I might even want to add some music to this so again go to my media browser click on audio and we might go to theme music and there must be a news one in here yes there is and now we can play that back so again being able to create content very very quickly you're all looking at me thinking you're mad that you wouldn't want to do that in the classroom well I think you would so you know so then I can go to my camera roll export that straight into there yeah Again, looking to change the dynamics of how we do things. There we go, and that's already in my camera roll. So again, if I click back, within there, play that now. Oh, that's a different one. That's one I did earlier. But very, very quickly. So we said about using Angry Birds. I go to a lot of schools and they're like, oh, kids are gonna just play Angry Birds on this. Angry Birds has got some really interesting physics behind it. That's what's interesting about Angry Birds. So how can we use that within the classroom to do a project looking at time and velocity and those sorts of things? There's a lovely app called Physics Video. Video Physics even. So again, I'm able to find that video very quickly. So choose existing or I've actually got one of Angry Birds as well, which I used. So I'll bring that in and it will say use and I will. 
and this drops an Angry Birds. So I've recorded this on my Mac using Screen Grab in QuickTime, which we get for free. And I can scrub through this as such. Yeah, so you can see my Angry Birds movement. Now, now I can get my target and I can start to track that movement. Yeah, so I'll do a few of these. Do a couple more. Okay, that will be the last one for us. So it's tracking that movement. Obviously, as a student, I do that a lot more effectively. And then if we go to the graph button, it now shows me that x versus y. It shows it as x velocity over time and x over time, y velocity over time and y over time. So using something like Angry Birds, we can then start to bring that into the physics curriculum, which is very, very interesting. I'm noticing one person I showed that to earlier, and he's like, I've seen that. So once I've done that, I can export it, again, straight to my camera roll. So that will go straight to my camera roll. And the nice thing is, it will give you the Angry Birds video and then the graphs over time as well, which means when it's done, OK, good. I can very quickly quick back, slick back to uh, iMovie. And you can see how quickly this stuff is happening. OK, and I will, should be able to see that now. There we go. So I can drop that down. Now, we would make what's called an enhanced podcast here. So we've got picture and we've got video, and we want to drop some audio over the top of that to explain what's going on. So if I press the microphone button, yeah, that will allow me to start to record. I'm hoping that's not going to blow up now with all this microphone stuff going on. In the video above, we are looking at an Angry Birds catapult movement and tracking time and velocity. So here we see the graph of x versus y. We can see x versus time and x velocity versus time. And we can see y versus time and y velocity versus time. Press stop, accept that. And again, we'll add a nice bit of music on top of that. So let's go to something that's nice and light. Let's go simple. Press that back. In the video above, we are looking at an Angry Birds catapult movement and tracking time and velocity. And here we see the graph Yeah, so now we've got a nice enhanced podcast. You think about students going home with this stuff. Maybe that's on a mobile phone, on a little USB stick and saying, I did this today. That's a pretty powerful statement to be able to make in such a short amount of space. So again, I can save that out to my camera roll, which I will do very quickly because I want to use it in another program. So I do get quite a little bit frustrated when I go into a lot of schools and they've got this stuff and it's just sat there doing nothing. And the, the thing is, we must play with this stuff. We must find out what's possible. Because if we don't, we'll never, you know, we all, we all learn when we play. Uh, that sounds a bit fluffy, but it's true. We all learn when we play. And if we've got technology, when we have a little eureka moment, you're really keen to go and tell other people. You're like, oh, I found this out. It's brilliant. And you want to tell other people. And in schools, they must do that. It's something that they must do. And the Apple Kit is a great piece of technology. It really is. But again, the success is built on people finding out what's possible. Um, I'm aware of time, obviously, so I'm going to keep an eye on this. Now we've got loads of time. So I probably want my students to do some resource and fact-finding to find out about velocity and time and that sort of thing. Now, we have Safari. OK, it's just a web browser. You're going to say, yeah, we know about web browsers, which is great. But again, it's a really good resource for schools. Um, one bit I really like, let's go to one of these. So obviously, I can touch and hold text and copy text. Yeah, that's nice and easy. If we find some pictures, one tap will give me the option to copy that picture straight into my camera roll. So that's nice. So I can, that will be in my camera roll. So again, if I just click quickly in there, he says, as it's not in my camera roll. Thank you, technology, for letting me down. And I, I'm, you will find that technology, when you're at the jaws of technology. So let's go to another one. I'm hoping that a bit of text as well will give me the fact that I can define that in some as well. So I can do dictionary on text when it comes to Safari. And I'm just looking for some pictures. How about this one? This looks as though it's got pictures. So the fact that I can 
copy pictures, he says going into YouTube. Let's try one more. Okay, I'm gonna, I could really do with some pictures. Let's go to images instead. So even with images, tap and hold, and I can save that image. I'm gonna save a few of these. Save image. So now hopefully, now I wanna go back to photos. There we go, so they've saved straight in. So that's really easy to be able to save images straight into our photos. Also with Safari, what I like is the fact if I'm a student and I want to save those resources and those links, if I go to the export there, I can add that to a home screen. And what it will do is add it as an app icon to my home screen. Yeah? So again, when I click back in, if I go to a different website, let's go to Wikipedia, and again, I can export that to my home screen. Press Add. So now I can obviously click and hold wait for the wobble, drop them on top, and then I've got a nice folder for my physics links, which is quite nice. Could also use the power of iBooks. So iBooks is our virtual bookcase where we can populate all of our books. I work in a very paperless world nowadays. I don't print anything out. So everything that I do is PDF onto my iBooks. So you can see the Misco Expo floor plan there and everything else. So last night, hotel details, last night's travel, yesterday's travel is all paperless on my iBooks. You can also see all my EPUBs. So if we go to the store, the store is where we would download all our books. So there you can see physics. Let's just write that out again. Okay, so I've got all my physics options there. Some are free and you can see that I've downloaded some of those, yeah. So again, if I want to download one, I'm not going to show you that because you'll see my password. And I'm sure you're a very trustworthy bunch here, but just in case. So if I go back now to my library and open up one of these books, so let's open up this physics CK12 here. Again, we've got some of the nice stuff that students could, or any of us could use. So I can highlight and I can get our full dictionary. That's quite interesting, because when I was at school, I had to say, if I didn't understand a word, I'd move on. I didn't understand it. But now, really, there is no excuse not to have a look at various options for that word. If I want to highlight a number of text, I can highlight that. I might want to even add a note and write that this is important for me to come back to when I want to work on this later and it adds as a, as a note there. And if we go to our bookmarks, yeah, it gives us a list of all those notes. So if I want to click on one, it will just give me the notes. If I click on the actual link, it will take me back to that page. So some nice things that we can do simply within iBooks. In the SEN space, so for example, I've been working with the Sheffield Royal Society of the Blind. They're interested in iPads. A lot of their younger students have got iPhones, so they like the way that works. We can also take advantage of our voiceover tool. So we've got a built-in voiceover tool as, much, as well as some other accessibility tools in here. So for example, now I can start to read. So there is quite a lot of option we can do as well. So we've got something called the rotor tool, which is where my fingers are like this on the screen. And I can just start to turn the rotor tool. And then we can start to read this as we want to as, as a visually impaired person. So I'm going to get to words. There we go. So now it should do, if I flick, is it up or down? Reads it word by word. Okay? So again, stuff you show people and they just don't know exists. Um, Nikki at the Society of the Blind loved the fact she can download her own, own iBooks and start to read them herself. That's a big thing that she's never been able to do before. So voiceover tool. Thank you. 
So once they've done their research, I might want them to create some sort of rich text document, yeah? So if I switch into something like Pages, our Pages is our Word equivalent in the Mac world. So again, I've got a full version on, on the Macs downstairs, but we've also got a cut down version here. So you can see I started one already. Physics by Neil Emery. That's a whole book that I'm going to cover the whole of physics in. <laughs> Not really. So you can see the pictures. Now if I want to change these, again, you can see the media browser button, which means I can simply press on the media browser button and go to the camera roll and we can see those pictures that we took. Yeah? So I can just bring those in to create our front page. Very, very simple. Double tap and you can do a little bit of editing if you want to do a bit of cropping, what we call masking here. You can mask that about when you're finished and just pop that in. So I might want to put something in here like velocity, which I'm going to do. There's velocity. Might want to change this picture. Let's change one more picture. Again, it's all about showing you how quickly this can be done. And remember, we tapped and highlighted some text when we were in Safari. So what is velocity? Double tap here, and I'm just going to paste that in. Ha. OK. That will do us. That's fine for a minute. I could also, so this is very much a document, a Word document that we're working with. But if I go to our media browser, I can also see the video that we took of our Angry Birds. So our finished Angry Birds is there. It's 34 seconds long. So I can actually bring that into my document so you can see it compressing. Actually, you can't see that. I can see it compressing on here. So now that's into my document. Yeah, so when I export that as an EPUB later, that would play on my virtual bookcase as a video within. So that's using, again, the content that we've already created. I might want to explain that. So I want to explain this in a slightly different way. So I'm going to use something called Dragon Dictation. I'm sure some of you know Dragon Dictation. It's a speech to text tool. So I speak to it, and it gives me the text. It's a very powerful tool. So I've got to remember what we're doing. In the video above, we are using an Angry Birds catapult movement to track motion and time. Full stop. Angry Birds is often considered to be a game but here we can see that it's been extremely useful in our physics curriculum, exclamation mark. I'm always worried what it's going to come up with now. So it, 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 it promotes very strong speaking and listening. Yeah, so as a student, you would go back and do that again until you've got it right. So I have a teacher in, I have a teacher in, um, the West Midlands, who works with a lot of uh, ethnic minority kids, because you know we have a lot of those up in the West Midlands, and they use Dragon Dictation to promote how, uh, speaking and listening. So again, I can just simply uh, copy this, and then I can quickly switch back to Pages and paste that in. Oh, we had that then, didn't we? Come on, and there it is. So again, it's different ways of doing things for me. It's not about using old processes to do things. And when we're finished with that, I go back to documents. And you should see, oh, I thought it was going to see. There should be, a, there you go, a little arrow. That's saving automatically to iCloud. So our, iCloud is Apple's new cloud um, solution, five gig for free. And then it's a paid service after that. You saw the arrow, so that was saving straight to iCloud. A lot of people will also say, well, with the iPad, I can't save documents, or I can't pull documents down. Well, I can also save this document into my WebDAV. So I've got a WebDAV set up in Birmingham. So if I want to save this now as a Pages document, as a PDF or a Word document, let's try a Word document. There's my WebDAV. And I can save that, and that will copy straight in. We can replace that. <laughs> So you see the processes that we can do really, really quickly, yeah? So we're able to create some content very, very quickly, which ends up I would export this and create an EPUB, which then would sit on my iBooks again. At the moment, I have to export that to my Mac to create an EPUB.
but at some point soon. There are apps on here that will allow you to create an EPUB and save it straight to your virtual bookcase. Again, for me, this is very personal to a student. I've created this. This is my resources. So when exam time comes around, I've got a whole bookcase that I've made of my resources containing video, picture, audio. It's a very different place that we're in. Let's kind of quick look at the education space. I'll be around all day, so uh, if you've got any more questions, come up to me. And I, I will say, openly and honestly, I'm not a teacher, and I'm not an expert. I'm someone who uses this stuff and finds out what's possible, and that's very, very important. To find out the best from this stuff, you have to find out and play with the stuff. So what about a business case scenario? Well, I hear a lot of stories like senior team leadership people, senior people at businesses will be given iPads because it's the new kid on the block, it's the cool kid, but they don't really know what's possible when it comes to this space. Um, email's always a big one. So email's a very easy one nowadays. So if I go to my mail contacts and calendars and add an account, you can see that obviously we have lots of accounts we can add to. Now, a lot of businesses will be PC-based, so they'll want to add a Microsoft Exchange account. Well, that's very easy. So I've got some MISCO details here. Uh, we've actually got a PC down on the stand that we're using this for, so .uk. Let's do this quickly. It's always good to show it live. And Emery. Let's press next. So it should want the server address. OWA dot. So very quickly, let's go next. So there we go, straight in. Uh, I want to do my mail and my calendars. I'll turn reminders off. OK, I'll keep those on my pad. Save that. I'm going to go back to my mail now, if I can find it, there we go. We will see that in my mailboxes, I've now got my Exchange account. So I can load into my Exchange account and see some of the emails there. Obviously, I also did iCal as well. So the nice thing about the, the Safari web browser, I think, as well, you can see that I haven't added those links, but you can see that we've got some links that have automatically appeared from our address. So it's got an address link. It's also got a link for the dates that it sees in there as well. So if I went to uh, one of those dates, so let's go Thursday the 20th, I could go, I press on it, it gives me the option to show in calendar. So I can go and have a quick look at calendar to see if I'm free on that date. I'm very free, I haven't got anything going on at all. My life is pretty bad, obviously. Um, so if I go back here now and go to the 20th again, what I want to do is create an event. So I create an event, I go to the calendar that I want to use and I press done and I press done again, and then when I go back to my mail, obviously that's sitting in there. Now the nice thing about that and the sync as well is I've got my iPhone synced up to that. So I wonder if I can show this by coming out and VGA in, into my... So if I go to them, and you can see that's synced in there already. Yeah, so there's very, very fast sync. You think about your PA back at the office, she's putting in a lot of your appointments, that will sync straight in using your Microsoft Exchange account. So that's very, very useful. I do, I love the way that you can VGA out of your iPhone as well. That's probably me just getting excited about saying that's very simple, but I love that. So that's a very useful feature, being able to add calendars and obviously have that sync across multiple devices, because you could be using those devices, you know, I can put that into my iPhone as well and that will sync straight to my iPad, sync straight back to my computer through my Microsoft Exchange and back to my computer at the office. I've also got a link on the address there, which is quite useful. So it knows where we are and it will drop a pin to where we are. Then we get all the nice functionality, so I can obviously do directions to here, now, I'm quite a visual person. I need visual stuff, yeah? <laughs> if I want to take a nice screen grab of that, I can just do a home button and a power button. And that saves that screen grab straight into my pictures. Yeah, so again, if I go to my pictures, in my photos, there it is, in my photos, okay? 
So a screen grab's nice. So sometimes what I do is I like to get nice and in here. I can start the directions. Okay. And then probably what I would do is bring up the table of directions here and again do a nice screen grab. Again, I'm a very visual person. I don't emails, I don't do a lot of email. What about if I want to actually do a little bit of annotation on that picture, change that picture a little bit? Well, I'd probably use, there's a number of these apps out here, but I'd probably use something like Adobe Ideas. So again, a little bit of myth busting. So we've done a little bit of myth busting, because a lot of times you'll hear Apple don't work with Microsoft. Well, it's not quite true, because we've done our Exchange account. And you often hear that Apple don't work with Adobe. Well, you know, in some areas not so much, but in other areas very much so. So if I want to, I'm going to bring in a picture. So you're not seeing this at the moment. That's fine. So if I want to bring in that picture from my album, OK, so I can bring that picture in. And here we go. Here's my picture. Now if I want to start annotating on this, and this is just doing things differently again. Yeah, so if I want to just say, um, what could I say? It's 10 mins, 10 mins walk. And then from there, if I want to save that to back to my camera roll, or if I want to email it to someone. So again, remember someone's emailed this to me. If I want to be more colorful and annotate on it something and email it back to them, then again, that's a different way of working for me. So I'm going to email that to myself quickly. Just pop that across and send that. So we can annotate. And there's other apps out there like Goodreader, iAnnotate. There's a lot of apps out there that will allow you to do this sort of annotation, which can be really, really useful. So I've got some information. I'm at an event. What would I do at the event? I get myself a coffee. I sit down like you guys. I'm a big social networker. I do a lot of social networking. I tweet. I find that I can get uh, a lot of business from tweeting and Facebooking and that sort of thing. So again, what I would normally do, and I would do this carefully, is probably I would take a picture of where I am. You're going to say geek, but I would do that. Let's just take a picture with the wire in the way. OK, there's you guys. Come on. OK, I'm just going to take a picture. And the nice thing about that now is when we go to our camera roll, I can go to export, and I can tweet that from that camera roll with iOS 5. So I can say, Misco Expo 2011, and send that. And that's gone. So you can tweet straight from our camera roll, which is useful. I'd probably be listening to the presentation. I want to take some notes, you know, to see what's going on in the presentation that I can come back to. I use something that's called SoundNote, which is quite nice. So SoundNote allows me to record the meeting as well as write notes with a stylus. And I'm, I'm using the stylus here. This is one from Boxwave. It's about £10. It's a real pen on that side, so be careful. Don't start writing on your iPad with that. Or there's a stylus on the end, which is nice and useful. So I press my pen. I press record. OK, and then I can start writing. So it, um, we might be saying, Misco, excuse my writing, Misco Expo 2011. And Neil was talking about education and business. And then when I press stop recording, I can play that back now. And when I press on the letters, it takes me to that exact point in the audio recording which is useful, because if I've wrote something down and I can't remember why I wrote it down, it will take me back to that exact point in the audio recording. So that's quite nice. And from there, I can export that again. So you can, you can actually file share that. So if you're in the same, everybody's on the same network, you could go onto that page and pull down that information. I can email it using Dropbox, as you can see. So if I email that now, not document, sorry. If I email with audio, that will send it straight to Dropbox to my public area. There's so multiple ways that we're able to work here. So I've taken some information about the presentation I'm at. What about if you want to collect data from the people that you're at this with? So if I went to business here, and something called Pronto Forms is a really nice form uh, program that you can create all your forms with. It's got a web back end, 
So I've got a Neil's customer lead here, yeah? So I would put in my lead information. Okay, so I'll do this quickly because I'm aware of time. Okay, I'm gonna put in my uh, email, so let's just pop back. So you're just adding all your information in here. At So we can press save. Let's go on to the next one very quickly. Oh, interesting one down the bottom. How many meetings do you go to and forget about who you've spoken to? I do it all the time. I'm never good with faces. So you can actually capture a picture from the photo. Again, let's turn that around. So we can take a photo of the person that you're capturing data about. And then we can go to the next one and they're gonna be a potential customer. Um, notes and comments, uh, maybe a training opportunity. Save this to the next one. We can GPS locate it as well, so it will track exactly where that form was taken. Uh, what was it? It was a networking event. Save that. And if we go on to the next one, I'm the sales rep, and we can even get to sign, get them to sign their life away to say, yep, yeah, send me all the bump you want in the world, and send now. And that will send it to me as a PDF. Okay, so that will send it as a PDF. I'll let that send and receive. So if I go back to my email, which I probably went past, didn't I? There it is. This is where you get to see all my emails. This isn't good. So there's, there's, there we go, straight away. And there's the form. So we can have a quick look at that form. And there's the form. Yes, yeah, so we can scale that up and use that. Um, the nice thing about that as well is the fact that if I go back to done, I can open that in iBooks and save that in my iBooks. So I can populate that on my shelf in iBooks, and there it is, yeah? So we've taken some uh, information. <coughs> um, I've thrown myself at the jaws of technology here, I tell you. I'd probably want to connect and speak to my office once I'd made an opportunity. Let's see how this works. There's someone primed somewhere. So I'm going to use FaceTime Don Barnes. Which phone number for Don Barnes? iPhone or mobile? Mobile. Making the FaceTime call to Don Barnes' is mobile phone. I wonder if we can do audio. Let's see, so I'm FaceTiming someone live here. We'll give it, we'll give it 10 seconds. And if it doesn't work. Just to show you, obviously, again, you'd work in a different way. You might not email that person. You might FaceTime them live to tell them that you're at the show, you've made a good opportunity, and you want to tell them that you're going to update that opportunity onto your spreadsheet or something like that. Dom's not going to pick up. That's all right. It worked seamlessly just before, but that's OK. He might FaceTime me again. So what I was trying to get across there is talking back to the office directly. Another nice little app. I'm probably going to stay on here until I get thrown off. Invoice to go. So I'd want to set up an estimate, potentially. Yeah? So invoice to go will allow me to set up an estimate very quickly. So I'm going to set up a Neil Emery. And again, I'm going to email myself. .com uh, address. We're just going to put Birmingham. That will do us here. So we can put all these details in. Save that. Um, items. So presenter so let's mock up today and my fee today was uh, 10,000 pounds <laughs> and then we can simply have a preview of that and what this will do for us is give us a total template for a quote that we can send straight away so I can send that email it to the person that we've just taken the data from and that emails it straight to their account now if Dom had picked up Let's see if we can just go back to the mail and see that, actually. <coughs> I 
Okay, I'll let that come in at some point. If Dom had picked up, he was going to ask me about the show, how it was going, and I was going to say, yeah, I've just got an opportunity. And I would have then updated the spreadsheet, which I just use numbers for. So I've got a simple spreadsheet set up in numbers. There's a lot of apps out there, Salesforce, Ryombi. There's some big beasts out there in regards to CRM packages. Um, a lot of businesses I see use a very small part of those CRM packages because they are big beasts. So just to show you here, obviously I can update. Um, let's delete that one. Okay, so I've just got a very simple Excel spreadsheet that again I can put in the amount here, which was a big amount, wasn't it? 10,000. Press done. And then here, if I want to change the total, I should be able to go to sum, and that's done that for me, and change the sum. So saving that means, again, I can save it straight to my web dev. Yeah, so I can save that back to the web dev. And then DOM, back at base, can see the opportunities that I've updated. And I can pull those documents down from the web dev as well. So if we go to spreadsheets, and I went to plus, you can see that I can access that web dev as well. So I've taken up much more time than I should have. Um, I think it's a really interesting space. Oh, sorry. A word on backups. So I'm saving that to a web dev. So that will save on my iPad. And then I'm backing that up to my web dev, which is a server back in Birmingham. You've also seen me use Dropbox. So Dropbox is a cloud solution. And I've also used iCloud, which is Mac Apple's cloud solution at the moment. So I'm trying to give you a few ideas and a few flavors. And I think that's important. There's not one way of working here. Uh, and it's early days. But there are various solutions out there. Um, so backing up the whole iPad would be done through iTunes which means when I sync to iTunes, it's creating a whole backup of my iPad to iTunes. Does that include any apps you've purchased? Yeah. Yeah, so apps as well that you've purchased, yeah. And when I've purchased apps on here, it's also syncing to my iPhone on here. I've got it set up so it's syncing all the apps and information to my iPhone as well. So yes. So I do think it's a very interesting space right now. Um, and you know, there are a lot of tablets out there, but I think the funny thing is, people call the tablet market the tablet market and Apple's iPad the iPad, which is very interesting. And it is a wonderful piece of technology, but I see it being underused a lot. And it is down to the fact that you must get your hands dirty and see what's possible. So there I was just trying to give you a couple of flows, a couple of, you know, we created some content for the education piece and we kind of looked at a scenario of being at an event and creating content where we're at an event like this. So I hope that was kind of useful. Um, I'm going to be down on the stand all day long so if you've got any other questions come up and see me there and we'll we'll do our best to answer those but thanks for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of the show